Well, Bob, the discord is deep and it is personal, and this could affect this court for a long time. No one has any idea how it's going to be resolved, but conservatives feel this sense of betrayal that Roberts changed his mind for the wrong reasons. If he'd been with the liberals from the beginning, my sources say, that would have been one thing, but to have switched his position and relatively late in the process infuriated conservatives. Of course, we don't know why he switched. He may have been focused solely on the law, but that is not what some of his colleagues believe. Now, Roberts initially sided with the four conservatives to strike down the heart of the health care law, the individual mandate, that requirement that all Americans buy insurance or pay a penalty. And when he changed his mind, he joined with the liberals to instead uphold the law. And then he tried furiously, with a fair amount of arm twisting, I'm told, to get Justice Anthony Kennedy to come along. Now, Kennedy sometimes sides with the conservatives, so he would have been Roberts' best hope. But on this issue of federal power, Kennedy was firm. The conservatives refused to even engage with Roberts on joining his opinion to uphold the law, and they sat out writing their own opinion. They, they wrote it really to look like a majority decision, my sources say, because they hoped that Roberts would rejoin them to strike down that mandate. And Kennedy was relentless until the end, trying to get Roberts to come back, but Roberts did not. So the conservatives' decision instead became a dissent. Now, interestingly enough, this conflict between these conservatives and within the court has been brewing for some time. You could almost trace it back to the first full term of the new Roberts Court. That term had several controversial cases, such as school busing, abortion, and liberal justices then thought Roberts had signaled when he came onto the court that he would be open to compromise, that he would be more moderate. But in that term, he sided with the conservatives, and the liberals felt misled. They were furious. As one said at the time, he talks the talk, but he won't walk the walk. Conservatives were angry then at Roberts, too. They thought he gave liberals false hope, and that just ended up pushing them further away. Now, that tension eased over the summer of 2007, but this conflict among the conservatives after Roberts walked the walk with the liberals this time may take much longer to resolve. Of course, the court does erupt into a conflict occasionally, Bush versus Gore uh, being a famous example back in 2000. But some people believe that you would have to go back nearly 70 years to see this kind of tension, almost bitterness, I think you could say, uh, that now exists among the justices. So, Jan, uh, what does this pretend for the future? Is this court now going to be a liberal-leaning court? No, no. John Roberts was, is, will be solidly conservative on most of the cases and you're going to see it I believe next term when they come back at the end of the summer and sit again to take up a whole new raft of cases several which will be very controversial and why if he didn't base his change on the law what was it based well, on? Well that's the question that everyone's asking inside that court and outside the court and some of his colleagues think that he succumbed to the pressure, that it was just too great, or perhaps he worried about how the court would be perceived by the public if it had a narrow decision with the conservatives voting to strike down the president's signature achievement. But only John Roberts knows the answer to that, and he may not ever want to tell us.